<clears throat> so I want to talk about uh, repairing threads and inspecting threads so during this build here you want to make sure all the fasteners are in in the right spot in the block and torque down into the block by double nutting them or unless you have a, uh, a stud driver so here I've got a it almost looks like a die but it's uh, just a thread chaser meant for this particular size which is a an 8 by 125 thread pitch so you just spin that on there and there's a little bit of a tight spot so you push back and forth on it and just work it a little bit. This is all done dry and you can see now it spins freely on here. So and that's what I want. So when I install my new fasteners to hold the case together and I torque it, then I'm not having incorrect torque values put on because of a thread that's slightly pulled and it's maybe changing the torque or causing it to strip the fastener either the nut or the stud. If it's a stud, it's a bit of a bugger when you've already put the case halves together. So. Um, it's better to check it all before you get going. So this one nice and free. Now, problem I found on the cases that uh, the manufacturer, what they did was when they installed this fastener in here, um, they ended up only putting it about three to four threads into the block and I've ran into it where I've tightened them and pulled the threads out of the case, actually on a couple different engines over the different times I've built them. So um, the best fix for that is helicoil, of course, but you gotta split the case to do that. You can't do it from external. So from the manufacturer, what they did was they only drilled this down like maybe about 300 thou, maybe three, 350, and you gotta go down about 600. So, and you know, don't quote me on the measurements there, but that's just a rough, rough explanation of where I'm trying to get to. And the block isn't actually drilled for that. So in order to get the fastener to sit down nice, so it's not gonna pull or abrupt the case when it's together and it gets hot and expands, because sometimes what happens is the threads above, then it can bind in the case and cause a leak. Uh, so <clears throat> the next thing I've gone and done, I, off, off camera is I've taken my 2164 drill bit and I've gone down inside the case and I've drilled it to a pretty good depth and just by finger depth you know I'm about that far on it my Healy coils and here's one of the Healy coils that I'm going to be using it isn't that long so by the time I put the Healy coil in there I'm going to probably be just about good and I can position it exactly where I want it so you can stack Healy coils um, when you install them um, if you're talented with Healy coils, uh, you can put them in and you install them the opposite way and then you end up with a really long one. So if you want lots of thread on something, so for an example, if I really wanted lots of thread on a long fastener like that, then I could add in the Healy coils so I've got lots of extra grip. But this one, for that position there, isn't that long, so it's just about just a little bit longer than the Healy coil length. So once it's stretched out in there, it'll give me probably just about exactly what I need. So I've gone and drilled this now deeper so that it will, the, the stud will go down deeper in the block. And I've checked the measurement on it. It's good when the case halves are together. I've got enough stud sticking up when it's bottomed in that bore. So um, anyways, we'll go ahead now and take a look at uh, the Healy coil in installation tool. And I'm not sure maybe camera can pick this up or not, but you see there's a, a drive on the end of the tool. And when you thread this into the Healy coil, it grabs the edge of the Healy coil and then you can thread it into the bore. So now that I have that set up, and what I like to do prior to this is just take my red Loctite and I flood the Healy coil and the tool with red Loctite. And I just kind of let it soak. It's almost like cooking something. I'm marinating it, getting it ready to go into the hole there. So I'm just going to leave that uh, out of sight for the moment and let it kind of just sit. I like to put lots on there and seal it into the block and then um, let it dry overnight and then run a tap back through it and then you get a really nice finish on the on it and then it's nicely uh, 
secured into the block with the adhesive there that red loctite which is i think uh 92 or number 92 or something like that so okay so now if i take the uh, helicoil tap that comes in the kit uh, you have to buy the drill bit separately or maybe you can buy a more expensive kit that has a drill bit but i just bought a separate drill bit for it uh, and it tells you what the drill bit size tells you what it is the helicoil so now i'm just going to put it in here and get myself positioned a little better while the camera's on and then start my tap just get it started and they recommend that when you're cutting aluminum and in this case it's magnesium alloy um, you would uh, use no lubricant on it because there's no need to lubricate it because the aluminum base and magnesium bases tend to have a bit of I guess a slippery property almost like a, a graphite and I tell you working around this case doing all the, the crazy things that I've done in here like hogging it all out for the 82 millimeter crank has really uh, you know it blackens my hands just from working around this stuff and, and that's just because of the aluminum base okay so we're looking pretty good looking pretty straight and you know you can go back and forth all you're doing there is relieving a little bit of the material but it's cut for the right size and let's go down to where we want to be yeah i guess you could use power on this if you want if you feel so inclined but you know i rather do it by feel and then you know for sure you're not messing it all up so we'll take a look at that here unfortunately i can't zoom in anymore but you can probably see in the camera they have got a really nice thread cut in there now and it's pretty deep i'm just going to check with a mic see how deep it is so i know how far to place my heli coil or if I have to go deeper, it's looking like I'm a little bit deeper than the Healy coil right now. So um, now I can position it where I want to. So I'm down pretty deep in the meat of the block there, and that's kind of where I want to be, I think. So now that that's nice and clean, and I've already got this cooking away here, then I'm just going to put in the Healy coil. Probably kind of hard for you guys to see that. My hands are in the way. Let's just get something on the top here so we can turn this. It's going in a little tighter than I thought, but that's okay. That's what I'm trying to do is correct it and bring it back to a nice tight thread. So you can see I've got lots of red Loctite on there and it's bubbling all out. You know, oh look at that, it's tightening right up and I'm just below the, the surface of the, the block. Let me get some of this blood out of the way. Red Loctite, it almost looks like blood splattered somewhere. I'll run them over before on the ground they make a big mess so have a look at that and thanks for watching for the time it's taken but this is a pretty good live demo and I didn't practice this ahead of time I mean if I did I would just be talking about it but here I am so I want to have another closer look here and looking like I'm below the deck surface and that's what I want get in there and take a look so I'm not sure if you can see it on a camera or not but I've taken the Healy coil and just brought it just below in fact I'm gonna go just a little bit more there and then 
you just turn the tool back out after you position it now if you go too far with the heli coil you can't back it out so that's why it's important to take a look like I can go back in here if I want and go down a little bit further as long as I do it before the set time on the uh, on the red Loctite but I should be fine with what I've got there so let's have another close look and it feels nice it's below the deck surface beautiful fit in there and if I take my fastener that's supposed to be in there which is right here even if I just try it in there look at that it just threads right in no problem at all so I could put this in now and leave it in and leave it bottomed but like I say I like to let the Healy coil set up and then I run a tap back down through it same size and then once I do that I've got the tap here for it too so once you do that then you've got a nice clean surface to refasten and it's really important here on this VW case because it's this is the main the front main on the uh, on the engine oh, oh pardon me it's not the front main it's the uh, the pump housing so it's important to make sure you can tighten the case together um, so that uh, when you uh, torque it together then you're not going to have any oil leaks and it's going to hold help hold and seal the the oil pump so there's a little bit of installation tips